I'm really grateful to have Andrea here. And I have totally, I have to just admit to my, my fans, uh, I have totally not been keeping up with things uh, in the case like, I, like I'd like to. And I need to basically, I need to, to brush up on that. Is, what would you say are the, the main developments of the last, say, say month or two? Or, or what, what have you been paying attention to? Or what have you, what have you, what surprised you or interested you? Sure. Well, so the case is in discovery, which means it's in a kind of long, boring stage of the litigation. Uh, to be perfectly frank with you, discovery litigation is why I'm not a civil lawyer. I hate it. It's absolutely um, mind numbing and just kind of obnoxious. Like it just gets really old hearing lawyers complain about how the other lawyer didn't meet and confer adequately. Um, so a lot of that stuff is not very interesting anyway when it comes down to the dispute. But then also, because it's discovery, you never really know if any of it's going to matter anyway. Um, my view on the discovery stuff is that if they're arguing over investigations, fine, but it's not going to really make a huge difference until you actually get to trial and see you know, what evidence people are, are going to introduce or not. So I don't follow the discovery dispute super closely. I am aware that they've been happening. That's basically what's been going on, um, you know, not just for the last month, but for, for many, many months. And so from what I have seen uh, right now, there is a pending motion in Virginia over um, forensic imaging. Uh, this is a situation where Johnny Depp had filed a motion to compel Amber Heard to turn over her devices, her cell phone, laptop, things like that, um, in order to basically do forensic analysis of them. Amber Heard then turned around and, and filed a motion against Johnny Depp, basically asking for the same thing. So that's waiting for a decision uh, in, the, in the Virginia court. And, you know, again, whether any of that will produce anything fruitful for trial or not, your guess is as good as mine. Um, but I know there has been a fair amount of discussion recently uh, about um, some indications that her photos, some of her photo evidence uh, has some fishy looking metadata. And so that indicates uh, it may, may have some doctoring to it. And the, the forensic imaging of the devices is where you typically find out the details of what those types of modifications were. So you're saying, uh, and, and some of this, I'm going to go back and edit. Some of this is just me asking for clarification. But um, so you're saying that uh, that that based on based on what Johnny Depp's lawyers have filed, that it seems like that his side suspects that Amber Heard has perhaps doctored uh, some of the footage or some of the evidence. Yeah, well, what they have is they have an analyst who's looked at the digital data that she's produced, right? So her image files, her, you know, things of that nature. And so they've reviewed the metadata that's associated with those. And based on that, they have identified certain types of discrepancies. Like sometimes there's, you know, data that gets added in by a third party application. Like if you have a photo editing app on your phone that you use or something like that. Geolocation data changes, time and time and date, you know, data changes. Um, so, so there's just a variety of things that have been identified for some of those um, images she's produced that has led them to say, obviously, there are discrepancies here. That's why we need the the imaging to explain them. Okay. Okay. I see. Um, do you? Uh, is that? It, the fact that they that they're saying there might there might be some dis, some discrepancies or there are some discrepancies is that generally indicative of something? It sounds like it sounds like there may be something fishy with um, with made metadata. Um, specifically, there was a reference to um, dates, creation dates that were um, after like last access dates or something like that. So it it like the things are out of order, and so it does look like that's something somebody might have to like specifically modify unless I there's see. a weird bug you know i don't know i'm not the expert right right <laughs> right could be yeah it could be um okay so so the the discovery and and we talk about discovery issues we're really talking about basically like uh, um like making sure that both sides have access to all of the evidence information they're supposed to and no one's holding back anything is that basically 
the issue. Yeah, this, this is the evidence gathering stuff. And so okay. discovery disputes in general are, you know, the stuff between them about who has to hand over what. It's also the arguments that have been going on about the depositions. I saw there was a, a re-litigation of some type in New York over um, Anthony Romero's deposition, the, the um, head of the ACLU. Um, and it looks like nothing changed there. So he is still going to have to be deposed and that could be really bad news for him. So hence why they fought so hard. And then there was also something that came back up in California that had also already been litigated that dealt with the, um, attempt to get the law enforcement officers, personnel records. Um, so California has got very specific rules about that. It got smacked down the first time it got smacked down again. Um, so Amber Heard is not going to be getting those records. I wonder what she thought she was going to, was going to, her attorneys thought they were going to prove with that. Any, any it, idea? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, it can be anything, you know, all, all they're looking to do is to just poke holes, you know, and right, so right. they could find right. that, you know, they, they skipped a mandatory training they were supposed to be at, you know, five years ago, because right. for whatever reason. And, and they'll use that to try to argue the cops dishonest or something. Right. Um, character assassination and stuff. Exactly. exactly. Um, so we got the discovery uh, issues. Um, and what else? Is there anything else that, that has that, well, that you've seen? So, so the one thing that has been going on that's um, discovery related that um, I personally think is, is pretty interesting. And so I, I have been paying attention to that. And that's the independent medical examination. And so, um, so basically the reason why this caught my attention, um, number one is just that because getting a medical examination in a defamation case period is a little bit unusual and, really? oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's no, it's a defamation, you know, there's no bruise that, you know, you can, you can point to, um, to, to, to have evaluated. So it's just, it's unusual. Um, and then the other reason is because normally when we get these, what they call precipes, which is just like this notice that gets filed in the clerk's office when you file a motion or, or something, normally mm -hmm. you get their accompanying legal memoranda and um, understand a little bit about what it is that they're looking for, why they're looking for it and, and what their justification is. And so we don't have any of the briefing for these motions. It hasn't been uploaded. And of course, my suspicion is because in order to bring these motions, they're likely having to show the court, you know, some existing um, medical information, diagnoses, things like that, that are going to be considered confidential under the protective order. And so they're probably allowed to file that under seal in Virginia. But that leaves us, you know, kind of really hanging out here, not really knowing, you know, what, what's going on with it or, or why. And, and so part of the problem, too, is we have this one order um, that was filed on October the 12th. And it says that the defendant's motion is denied. So Amber Heard's request for an independent medical examination of Johnny Depp was denied. And the order says plaintiff Johnny Depp may call Dr. Kipper as a fact witness only and shall withdraw his expert disclosures. And then we don't have any, any kind of order at all that says, you know, whether Johnny Depp's motion to compel the independent medical examination has been granted or denied. So there's a lot to like read through the lines here and, and speculate a little bit about what's going on and, uh, and why. So that's what I have been particularly interested in over the past few weeks is um, taking a little bit of a deep dive into what the independent medical exam process is in Virginia. And then just a little bit on a deeper level, because we kind of suspect what this exam would show, you know, if um, if Johnny Depp is, is allowed, um, you know, is, is granted his motion then what, you know, what are they actually realistically going to be able to potentially do with this information at trial? So before, so before that's really fascinating. Before you continue, I just want to make sure I understand. Are you saying that, so are you saying that Amber Heard's motion to have him, him analyzed was denied, but his is, we don't know if his was accepted or not. Is that that's what you're right. saying? 
And okay. I, all, all we know, all we know is that, um, you know, there's just this notation on um, the only order that was filed that says plaintiff may call Dr. Kipper as a fact witness only and shall withdraw his expert disclosures. So what this says to me is that he had designated Dr. Kipper as an, as, as a potential expert witness. And so an expert witness in court gets a little bit of, um, special treatment. They get to offer their opinions about things, um, in ways that lay, lay witnesses aren't allowed to do that. And so presumably because Dr. Kipper had worked with Amber and, uh, you know, presumably diagnosed her and, and prescribed medication and stuff, um, he, you know, has information and opinions clearly about her, her medical, her medical conditions. Um, but so what they're saying in this is that he, they're not going to allow him to be treated as an expert. He's going to be allowed to testify to like what he did and what his personal role was and what he witnessed, but he's not going to be allowed to be authoritative on the question of, you know, does Amber Heard suffer from X, Y, or Z diagnoses? I don't know exactly why this is. Um, I can say that, you know, my, my experience working with mental health uh, experts in the criminal context is that uh, my understanding is that there's ethical limitations on a medical or mental health provider's ability to take on dual roles as clinician and as a forensic expert, because basically right. as soon as you're a, a clinical practitioner, you know, you have, you have biases and interests involved with this particular person. You can't be objective about them the way you need to be in a forensic setting. So it sounds like they're saying that um, Dr. Kipper isn't going to be allowed to take on this sort of impartial role of diagnosing Amber, um, but he is going to be able to testify about his, you know, experiences with her and, and um, what he witnessed and so forth. Right. That's really interesting. Um, and so it sounds like what you're saying is potentially, I mean, I would have, I would imagine Dr. Kipper I would imagine that any testimony or insights that he would have based on what we know would not be flattering to, uh, to Amber. And so I, I I'm wondering if this is like a, a kind of a win for Johnny Depp, that she's not getting the evaluation that he wants, but it seems like Dr. Kipper is going to have some kind of input in this. Right. Well, and again, we don't know if they're saying Dr. Kipper can be a fact witness because we're going to let you have an independent expert or we're just not going to have any experts and Dr. Kipper can testify about, you know, what, what he did as a, as a doctor or anything yeah. like that. So we, okay. we, just, we just don't know. Um, I do want to, one of the things that I had um, pulled up was I took screenshots from the UK witness statements where this okay. came up, because I think this is likely to frame um kind of where this came from and, and where it's going uh, in terms of the Virginia trial. And so Johnny Depp's UK witness statement, um, he says, I'll just read it. Fundamentally, the signs that Ms. Heard began to demonstrate then became the full and developed aspects of her character that I came to know during the incredibly unhappy time when we were together. She is a calculating, diagnosed borderline personality. She is sociopathic, she is a narcissist, and she is completely emotionally dishonest. I am now convinced that she came into my life to take from me anything worth taking and then destroy what remained of it. Indeed, later in our relationship, when we sought the help of a marriage counselor, the marriage counselor confirmed to me that Ms. Heard had a borderline toxic narcissistic personality disorder and is a sociopath. It was further explained to me that Ms. Heard's projection of emotions is extremely exaggerated. She will always overreact and she simply cannot be wrong in any circumstances. She invariably accuses other people of the bad things she herself has done. The same has been said to me by my private doctor, David Kipper. 
So that in a nutshell is Johnny Depp's case on Amber Heard's mental health, right? That That's his allegation. So then Amber Heard in her witness statement uh, responded and said um, very quickly, Johnny Depp says that I have been diagnosed as borderline or borderline toxic narcissistic personality disorder, and that I have other unspecified personality disorders that I am a sociopath, et cetera. <laughs> This is all completely untrue. So there you have it. Johnny Depp says she's a psychopath. She says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and the question then becomes, is this a legal dispute that we can litigate in the state of Virginia in a defamation <laughs> case? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's hilarious. I, that, so, yeah, I mean, because basically, like, the, you, you really can't imagine much worse of a diagnosis uh, than, than someone is a, what, than what Kipper's, well, what this, this doctor and Kipper's evaluation is, uh, according to, you know, Johnny Depp, borderline, you know, sociopath, toxic, uh, narcissistic. So, yeah, so basically, um, that's hilarious. I mean, it's hilarious. That is what, so you're saying that's basically what, what it might come down to, or at least that's going to be a big component of it is, that, is basically adjudicating her, her mental state, perhaps. That clearly seems to be what, what Johnny Depp is trying to do with this, this independent medical examination, because we already know, you know, from the UK trial, Dr. Kipper thinks she has these things. Now, Dr. Kipper didn't testify in the UK trial. He, you know, presumably is going to in Virginia, um, but just taking at face value that Johnny Depp's statement is correct and that, that Dr. Kipper did actually, you know, diagnose her with these things, um, then Amber Heard, you know, is, is saying, no, I'm not. And so there's like really two issues that, that come out of this, right? One is, did Amber Heard commit perjury in the UK when she said, no, I've never been diagnosed with these things? And number two is, you know, does she, does she actually have some diagnosis and does that have any relevance to proving the underlying defamation case? So she said, so she said in the UK trial that uh, Amber said that she had not been diagnosed with, with, with any yes. kind of or psyche or psychological disorder. She said no, no personality disorder. No personality um, disorder. And I, I didn't have time, you know, that there's a lot in the transcripts and I didn't have time to go back and look at her testimony, but I do vaguely recall her talking about it in her testimony and um, I believe she had referred to narcolepsy because, you know, she was taking the Provigil for a while um, and then possibly also ADD or ADHD, um, you know, which again, would justify yeah, the uppers. Yeah. She, yeah. Likes, she likes the uppers. <laughs> but I, as I recall, she denied having an eating disorder um, and she d denied, I believe she denied other, any other types of mental health diagnoses. Well, she also said, and yeah. And, and of course she also said that she didn't, uh, she didn't like to drink to excess as well yes. in the in trial. Yeah. Um, so how much would it, would it have any bearing on the Virginia case that she lied in the UK court or that's completely irrelevant? Well, that's the question. That's what's going to be interesting. And so there's a rule in Virginia that is um, evidence rule 2607. And it lays out um, how you are able to impeach a witness. And so impeaching a witness, broadly speaking, means calling their credibility into question. So this right. rule lays down these different ways that you're allowed to do that in the Virginia court. And so it includes things like introduction of the evidence of the witness's bad general reputation for the traits of truth and veracity, evidence <laughs> of a prior conviction. Uh, the one that we're interested in here, evidence of prior unadjudicated perjury as provided in a, a separate rule. And so, yeah, if she lied in the UK court, even if she hasn't been adjudicated as being a liar in the UK court, that can potentially be used against her um, in Virginia wow. for purposes of proving that she's not honest. That's interesting. So, and so would, so that, potentially that lie that she told that she had not ever been diagnosed with a personality disorder that could go toward that to some yes. degree. Yeah. So they would be allowed mm -hmm. to bring that in to establish that she had been diagnosed. Um, and, you know, we saw how, how impeaching Amber works in the UK trial. Um, they will 
the way that it formally um, has to be done is you have to basically present the witness with the, you know, conflicting statement or impeaching evidence or whatever, and then they mm-hmm. have an opportunity to respond. And so Amber just always tries to find, you know, some way around. She changes her story or she denies or that's not what I meant or they got that wrong or whatever. And, you know, yeah, so I'm sure she will have <laughs> some reason for why she said in her sworn witness statement that she's never been dosed, diagnosed, she, you know, she forgot or she didn't agree with right. it. Somebody, right. somebody later on told her that that was wrong and that they, you know, it was a bad right. diagnosis. So whatever, she'll she'll have some explanation for it. But it's just one more thing that, um, yeah, potentially it looks like Johnny Depp is going to be able to to bring that in. So well, so then- this this trial it could be uh, it's it could be really interesting, uh, especially if she feels like her back is up against the wall, as as I would imagine she's got to feel with this in a way that she's not felt uh, before, and then with and then with some of this perjury like uh, you know brought into this and and Kipper's diagnosed. I mean, there's it just seems like there's a lot of stuff that uh, it's going to be interesting to see to see how she responds. Cause I don't think that, you know, smacking on her, her popcorn or whatever and rolling her eyes and smirking is going to get very far with this one. Like it. it's <laughs> not going to help her, but it's what she's going to do. She can't do anything else. I just, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. <laughs> I mean, really, do you think, I, I know you don't have any particular special insight into Amber Heard, but uh, just kind of your general reading right now of, of, uh, what her attorney's done so far and just how things are looking. I mean, is it, is it pretty bad? It seems like to me, a lay person, it seems like it's pretty bad for her. Do you, is it pretty bad from your it angle? It's pretty bad to me, you know? Um, <laughs> and, and I think that the sort of tactics that they're engaging in, you know, really, really speak to that. I mean, it's, it's unusual anyway to ask a judge to reconsider a ruling that they've already made. Number one, you're not supposed to argue with the judge about their ruling. They really don't like that. They're the authority. You're not. Once they've said what it is, you know, take that in good grace and and move on. So, but, but then, you know, to, to do that without even really having like a good reason, just so we, you know, we, we really think you should reconsider this or decide it the other way, even though you already didn't, um, it's just very tasteless kind of yeah well it's um it's very very desperate because it's you know the odds of that being successful are so minute and the downsides of doing it you know are are so great now maybe she doesn't care because at least at this point that's satellite little litigation going on. If she pisses off the court in California or she pisses off the court in New York um you know, that maybe doesn't really bother her so much because the, you know, the trial at the end of the day is going to be in Virginia. But, you know, these, these things just have a way of creating a climate and, um, you know, information gets back to Judge Penny as, as the discovery litigation continues. Um, So yeah, it's just, it's not, they are not looking like um, folks who are litigating from a position of strength. Mm. well um is there anything that you wanted to i mean i I really just wanted like a short snippet like that i think you you've i think this has actually been really great did you want to add anything is there anything we haven't covered that you want me to like ask about well what i can do is i can tease where i'm actually like most interested in the um the independent medical exam stuff because i haven't it may potentially, if I get the chance to do it, you know, I may, I may do some additional research in the, in the Virginia law and, and just see if I can get something a little bit more specific. But one of these other bases for impeaching a witness is um, any other evidence which is probative on the issue of credibility because of a logical tendency to convince the trier of fact that the witness's perception, memory, or narration is defective or impaired or that the sincerity or veracity of the witness is questionable. Yeah. And so that's the interesting one to me, because that's the one that, you know, the question is, can we use Amber Heard's personality disorder 
and its associated symptomology, you know, which may very well include things like callous behavior, disregard for the rights of others, and things along those lines, uh, under this exception to show that her personality disorder makes her un- not credible. Mm. This is a very um, is there a precedent? Well, I was gonna so I was gonna say um, okay. So this is really fascinating. Is there precedent? I mean, how much of a precedent is is there for that for this kind of like looking at personality disorders in a legally credible like way? Or that's a great question. It's it's fairly novel as far as I've been able to tell, and I think part of that is just because you know as mental illness goes, you know, these personality disorders themselves are a little bit on the novel side of things. Um, We don't, I mean, I see them all the time in criminal practice. I always have clients diagnosed uh, antisocial and and narcissistic and and so forth. Um, But it doesn't tend to get used a lot in the criminal context because personality disorders by and large don't um, affect people. And I hate to even say this now, because it's not always true, but it doesn't really affect people's cognition. You know, it doesn't present in the way that like a psych- like psychosis does. It's not, yeah, yeah. it's not like schizophrenia or something. No, we know it's, it's it, no, we don't understand what you mean. And it's also like, it's a, I feel like personality disorders are, are still kind of more of a, uh, still a newer way of, uh, relatively speaking, kind of a newer, uh, still a newer way of, of thinking about some of this stuff. Um, but anyway, well, go they, on. They are. Yeah. And they're, and they're, you know, I find them fascinating because it's, it's one of those things that's just, it's hard to pin down, you know, they have these different traits. They exist on a spectrum. Everybody kind of has, you know, some of these traits to more or less of a degree, right. but then at some point it crosses over into a, a point of pathology and where that point is can be really unclear. It's really similar to addiction in my, in my view, in that way where, you know, there, there's use and there's abuse and there's even like chronic long-term abuse um, that isn't necessarily the same thing as an addictive process. So personality disorder is, is um, it's a little bit nebulous still. And, and so I think that might be part of, of why its use is a little bit limited in the criminal system. But then the other reason is because it really butts up against some um, real hardline restrictions on the types of evidence that can be brought in and, and used in trial. And so broadly speaking, on the one hand, you have a rule that says that character evidence generally is inadmissible. You don't get to present evidence of somebody's character to say, therefore, they probably acted in conformance with this character on the, on the situation in question. And so that that's a classic example of you don't get to call somebody a liar in order to prove that they lied on a particular occasion, right? Because that's the it. problem is, is that even liars are occasionally honest. So somebody being right. a liar is not really good proof one way or another about any particular incident. Right. Right. When you talk about personality disorders, you know, in many ways you are talking about character. You're talking about um, not just in terms of how it's diagnosed of, of like self image and, and, you know, how the, how the ego basically is, is constructed in, in functions. Um, but then also, you know, entrenched behaviors and, and patterns. It's of very conduct. abstract. Yeah. It's very like abstract and even slightly maybe subjective to, I mean, to a degree. Right. Well, it is. And, and, and that again, you know, now, now it just kind of, it kind of comes down to a question of, well, what's, what's character then, you know, when right. we're talking about what's, what's character is that, you know, is what you do your character is what you think your character. That's something, you know, philosophers have argued about for thousands of years. So, you know, right. we haven't solved that problem in 2021 for the Amber Heard trial. So but then on the other on the other hand, you have these competing legal rules that say, well, if you can establish that somebody acts a certain way as a habit, meaning that it's a you know, specific, predictable response to a specific stimulus, um, that's going to be admissible because that does tend to be relevant to show that a person acted a particular way on a particular occasion. And hmm. so that's where some of those um 
you know, things that were mentioned in Johnny Depp's statement can, you know, potentially, could they be cast as habitual types of responses? If she's accused of wrongdoing, she will invariably project, she will invariably, um, you know, tra transfer it onto somebody else, she will become aggressive, she will become, you know, potentially violent, things of those nature. And so if they can establish that type of response as a result of her personality disorder, that is also a potential ground to, to be able to get that into court. Interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. And of course, this was not anything that the UK court was interested or that judge was interested in getting into or they, could, or, or they couldn't even get into really in the UK, in the UK trial. It was this kind of just a, a whole different thing going on there? Right. Well, I think in part they had chose they chose not to call Dr. Kipper to testify. Uh, Johnny Depp made that decision. We don't know why. Um, because Amber Heard wasn't a party. Again, we can assume right. the third party discovery was was limited, so they weren't able right. to do things like the independent medical examination. I see. Um, okay. Okay, that's right. Um, Wow, that's that's really so. So this this could potentially it it sounds like this this trial in Virginia could potentially be uh, a pretty uh, have a pretty like strong like psychological dimensions. And it sounds like what you're saying. Oh, yeah, it might, it might, and and it's it's fascinating to me because it is this kind of novel novel area. And so I haven't been able to to really fully research it yet, but the little bit I have been able to look into it. Um, where I've seen that personality disorder tends to come up um, most often in litigation is in employment litigation. And mm. so um, it's where it's where it's happening is in context of like sexual harassment claims, um, hostile workplace, hostile environment, um, things of that nature. And so what they're doing is they're using evidence of, for example, like a borderline personality disorder diagnosis to indicate that this person is um, unusually sensitive. And so what they perceive as being, you know, harassment may actually just be a product of their disorder and not a product of, you know, whatever activity is, is going on in, in the workplace. Um, so that's, that's just an example of, of how that, that, um, that has kind of started to work its way into these, these types of decisions. Um, but it does seem to still be pretty limited at this point. And the, the reason why, I mean, is the thing to understand, me medical, medical examinations and medical evidence in general um, gets treated with a much higher standard than somebody's even financial information. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a there's a difference in Virginia, for example, to get this independent medical examination, um, you have to get prior permission from the court and you have to show good cause for it. Good cause is a higher standard in discovery than pretty much anything else. Like normally, if it's even marginally relevant, or you can make a you know bare art, you know, an argument that that it may in some way become marginally relevant, you have a right to go get it. And so mm -hmm. with, the, with the medical information, it's, you know, the, it's kind of reversed. The presumption is you don't have a right to that. You have to show a, a pretty good reason um, to be able to go and get it. And that's one of the things too, to bear in mind with not knowing how the court has ruled on this motion. Um, she does have to find good cause for it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to mention one of the comments that I had, um, I had seen floating around uh Concerned the fact that in the complaint, uh, Amber Heard had alleged that she suffered emotional harm, you know, as a result of the defamation and Johnny Heard's wrongful acts. And therefore, you know, that's part of her damages claim for, for defamation. And so mm -hmm. the comment has been put out there that, well, that's going to justify um, being able to, to do an independent medical exam. And in a lot of cases, that is, that is true. In a personal injury case, for example, perfectly normal for a doctor to come in and, and check out the plaintiff and evaluate, you know, right. what exactly are your, your injuries and your um, recovery and, and so forth. Um, right. But when you are getting more remote from something like a car accident and into something a little bit more intangible like defamation. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not really clear that, um, that it's going to be a, a real cut and dry dispute over, you know, the legitimacy of, of her emotional harm. There mm -hmm. was um, 
I, I happened to see just recently, uh, you know, Vanessa Bryant, the widow of Kobe Bryant, is engaged in litigation with the um, one of the law enforcement agencies down there uh, in, in SoCal. And it had right. to do with them uh, or somebody in the office, uh, I guess, accessing and releasing um, photos, like graphic photos from, from the scene. And right. he had alleged that she suffered um, emotional distress as a result of that. And so the, um, <clears throat> the police, you know, the law enforcement had asked for this independent medical exam for that reason to justify her, her emotional damages claim. And so that was denied real recently. And the, the justification that the court gave was that it wasn't going to be timely. And so I think what they mean is that there's no point in talking to her now because it doesn't shed any light on how upset she was, you know, a year ago when, oh. when those photos came out. So yes. that's just example, an example of um, one way that just sort of pleading an emotional injury is you know, not enough to get over that hurdle of, you know, good cause to subject them to a, a medical examination. And so I don't think that is going to be a good cause that that in and of itself is not going to be good cause in this case. Um, Johnny Depp had also in his complaint, I would also just point out he had pleaded emotional damages. So if that was going to be enough to just establish or a reason to, to do a medical exam, then Amber Heard's request would have been granted. And obviously it wasn't. So we can assume from that, you know, there, there is going to have to be more of a link that they have to show the judge um, to justify, you know, if they got it. Um, they, they had to show more. And so if they did, that's kind of my theory is that number one, it's the it's the unadjudicated perjury piece. Um, but number two, it may be this independent basis uh, for showing that her personality disorder affects her credibility. I see. I see. Wow, it's, good. it's really fascinating. Um, do you have any sense I just overall, I guess, from just everything that's happened so far uh, in Virginia with with this new judge, do you have any sense of maybe where this new this new judge is leaning or have you gotten any like whether she's exasperated with Amber Heard or lawyers at all or anything? I don't I don't get that sense. You know, a good judge, you'll you'll never know. And right. so far, I feel like um, Judge 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 Penny has really kept her cards cards close to the vest. Um, she has not, you know, dressed anybody down um, in, in open court that we've seen. Um, she's been very careful, you know, direct and, and pretty unemotional in her writing as far as, as far as I've seen. So I, I think ultimately she's just going to be a good judge who, who will be fair. That's good. And now if you, you know, it, it, assuming that there, that, that the judge, that she doesn't have the, the kinds of biases that we think that, or that I think at least that the UK judge had or whatever issues he, he had, it, it, assuming that she's, that she's a fair judge, open-minded judge, do you feel like there's enough evidence on, on Johnny Depp's side that if, if, if one were being objective, that it should be pretty clear, pretty damn clear uh, that Amber Heard is guilty? I mean, is it, is it, is that, is his case pretty compelling objectively, legally? Oh, I, I mean, I found the UK case objectively legally compelling and they have a ton more <laughs> since they went to trial there. So, I mean, from my perspective, it's it's overwhelming. You know, you you never get a case this strong. You pray for a case this strong. Ben really? Shu is possibly like the luckiest lawyer who has ever lived because he's got such a good case for such a high profile client and he is going to have an absolute blast in this trial. And is, and, and, and first of all, that's, that's really amazing too, or that's, fa that's fascinating. Um, and, and I just have to ask, so is the, is, is the reason why the case, he, he, why he does have such a good case and why the case against her, against Amber Heard is so strong is the reason for that because of the audacity of what she did. Like you just don't see, 
you just don't see a hoax or a, a scheme like with like this very often because most of the time people don't have the audacity to do it or was she just very sloppy and careless or how would you characterize it yeah it's a good question because you know my opinion i feel like the audacity really cuts against him you know it's it's hard for a jury to think oh yeah come on a hoax you know yeah we're, we're gonna buy that all these people got involved in this hoax um but the problem is, is that once you are confronted with the dishonesty after dishonesty after dishonesty, it just becomes hard to, you know, to, 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 to give her really any, any credibility. Um, there's just too much that is, you know, plainly contradicted by objective evidence, you know, photographs at the time, other people being around that, that type right. of thing. Um, you never know what a jury is going to do and what a jury is going to think. Um, part of the risk in, in the UK, I think, and, and, and Johnny Depp needs to be mindful of it in Virginia too, is the fact that he is Johnny Depp and, you know, he does look a little different and act a little different and right. kind of present himself as, as, um, you know, I don't want to say a rock star because I, I don't think he, you know, mentally like presents himself like, oh, I'm a rock star, but just, you know, it's how he looks and he's got an entourage and, and he has like the thing. Well, and he has that. And, 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 he, you know, and, and I think even was it Dr. Kipper's notes that came out in the UK trial, even attested to this, that he does have a very, he, uh, Dr. Kipper said he has a strong id, but he has a very, like, he has a very sort of um, counter conventional um uh personality like he likes he likes the fact that he goes against against uh, the societal grain in a lot of ways and like i uh, and i do and i feel like there were there were some times when the uk testimony was maybe that he gave although it was honest and good for him for being honest it was maybe a little tone deaf occasionally uh, such as you know when he was talking about um, helping his his daughter to experiment with uh, with marijuana for the first time, um, and you know, I mean, I smoke marijuana. I'm not judgmental against it, but there was a sort of a like, well, and why would anybody have a problem with this? You know, she was what, like 14 or, or 15, and uh, again, it just seemed to me like occasionally that he had, you know, he, I think he likes being a, a rebel. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, he liked for Amber Heard's uh, parents when they were married, they called him their uh, their son out outlaw, right? Not son-in-law, but son outlaw. He has that sort of like rebel renegade sort of James Dean thing that I think he likes to cultivate. And that's great. But at the same well, time, he, it can cause some problems. <laughs> he does. And, and kind of along with that, too, you know, I, 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 one of the things that I see in Johnny Depp that I don't know if other people also see is because he's from Kentucky and he doesn't have an accent. And I am also married to a man <clears throat> from Appalachia who lost his accent. And it is a thing that is uh, extraordinarily common. Uh, I didn't know this until, of all things, I listened to Dolly Parton's America. And one of the episodes they talk about, like how... It's, it's such a thing, you know, that the Appalachia, there's this culture associated with it and stuff and people, um, you know, young people just more and more deliberately lose the accent to not be associated with that. And so, you know, there, there's something about that to me that is um, a little bit performative, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're putting on a new way of speaking, if you're using, you know, different lingo, and then you have the added, you know, he's Johnny Depp, he's a rock star, he's a, he's an actor, he's a rebel, um, and he, this is the persona that he projects, there's a risk of an authenticity problem with him, and just being able to connect with the jurors as they are. Um, right. Right. The thing that everybody, you know, would, I think, do, do well to remember is that we like to think that jury trials are, you know, about the evidence and right and wrong and, you know, painfully applying the law and stuff. Um, but what the studies of, you know, like the jury, jury, um, jury analysts and, and people like that tend to come up with is that it's actually the jury tends to decide the case really, really early on and they mm -hmm. decide it based on who they like, mm. you know? And, and so wow. it's, it's just, it's going to be really important for him to recognize Amber Heard, you know, he knows Amber Heard obviously better than we do, but we can assume she's got some charm. 
you know, and that that has yeah. carried her really far in life. Um, he, he needs, he needs to remember that and, and um, think about how he can make himself as likable as possible to the jury. Right. Right. Well, um, wow, it's a great conversation and some really great insights. Actually, I think, I mean, some really interesting things said here today uh, that I haven't, I haven't thought about. And I, I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing that to the table. Uh, is there, is there anything else, any other like insights or anything that you've noticed or um, you think is noteworthy for our audience that we haven't covered here? Nothing I can think of Just in hurry up and wait mode. <laughs> I know. Well, it, it's, it, it will be honest. Well, it'll be honest. has been so good snoozing away, but I, I can happily bring her for a little. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, so, so uh, Andrea has uh, a very well-behaved so far uh, puppy who's been snoozing. So yeah, let's have her uh, sign us out, so to speak, <laughs> sign us off. <laughs> oh. So this is Buffy. Oh, she's four months old, and she's my little precious angel. <laughs> Buffy looks like she did just wake up from a nap. Yes, I can see it. Slightly dazed eyes. Like, where am I? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, that's fun. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That so is, that is why exciting. I haven't been uh, researching Johnny Depp stuff more, uh, <laughs> more in depth. No, she's beautiful. How old is she now? She's four months. Four months. And what kind of lab? It's She's a lab. She's a Vizsla. A what? She's a Vizsla. A Vizsla? What is that? A Vizsla. It's a, it's a Hungarian hunting dog. Oh, okay. I've never heard of that before, but I'm he not is, up with my dog. What they would call a gentleman's gun dog. Ah, I like that. I like that. Okay. But she won't be ta- you won't be taking her hunting, probably? I don't mm-hmm. hunt with her, no, but she finds the birds anyway. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that <laughs> animal instinct. Well, listen, thank you so much, Andrea. And you know what? This I, I'd really like to turn this uh, into a regular thing. So for our audience, um, you know, as, as much as our schedules permit, and like I said, hopefully mine will be, was, uh, my schedule will be lightening up after another uh, month or two. But uh, we'd like to do this, and especially getting into the trial, um, you know, we would love to be your court TV <laughs> for the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. Definitely. No, but seriously, we're going to be offering a lot of updates and having a lot of conversations. So you've got that to look forward to. And uh, yeah, so we will see, uh, we'll see you all later. And as always, um, please uh, donate via PayPal, Patreon. Uh, The links are below and every little bit helps again. um, I appreciate it. And most people who watch do not donate, but I appreciate the, those, the minority who do it. It's really encouraging. So thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.